Yeah.
Ini sepertinya tetap di Hongkong.
Sadar, sadar. Hah, kamu gak apa-apa? Ngeri banget lihat kamu barusan. Kayaknya kerasukannya kelebihan deh. Oh, kira kamu acting barusan. Tapi ternyata beneran kemasukan. Aku dibawa tadi. Dibawa ke dunia. Di, di mana malas-malasan adalah komoditas. Hah? Tapi, banyak pertanyaan yang tidak ada jawabannya. Minggu depan jangan ikut cacetan lagi deh.
kuatku kau berpejam dan bernyanyi dengan desir desir angin yang berhembus kencang bergunung I'm so honored to um, talk to Ria Rizali about the creation of this new work, um, as well as his dozens of interests and projects and sound and filmmaking. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that I, as a massive fan of Radio Place, um, have the honor to talk to you. Welcome, Ria. Hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me and thanks for CTM for inviting the project as well. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm just so blown away by the piece. I saw it today again and I had seen it before and I just yeah had to watch it again. Um, maybe let's start the conversation right with the piece. Um, what's mm -hmm. what's behind it? What was your process? Um, yeah, developing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so I was before living in Indonesia and then I moved to Hong Kong in maybe three and a half years ago. And since I moved to Hong Kong, I kind of like, you know, be friend with uh, a lot of, uh, the, especially like domestic workers. It's because there's no, uh, in terms of like the idea, in terms of the idea of domestic works, it's, it's something that uh, somehow being neglected or not maybe not neglected but kind of like you know less discussed um than the manual manual labor so i guess that's also why they always especially the domestic worker always say you know we cannot be replaced with, with anything so that's the that's the reason why the protagonist has so much questions about anything um you know if if machine change the uh, replace the the manual labor then who does the domestic work 
kind of yeah i mean and i mean i had to think about that watching it um men are paid to do nothing what about women is it even mm. an option for women due to reproductive labor mm. um you talked you you mentioned how you talked um about sensitive topics with these um workers and and i mean the situation of domestic workers uh is very something that as is talked about um way too little and often they are in really bad working conditions mm. were they even open to talk uh without fear of yeah um being neglected by the um employers or something yeah Yeah, I mean, I think in Hong Kong, especially the union for Indonesian domestic uh, uh, migrant workers, as well as the Filipinos, it's quite strong. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so sometimes they are actually the one who are, some, well, sometimes they are actually stronger than the than the just, you know, factory union in, 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 in Hong Kong, especially. Um, yeah, and some uh, some of them are also kind of like not really open to tell their story because they're somehow afraid with the uh, with their uh, employers. But uh, but because of the unions, uh, and then there's also a lot of kind of like activists involving uh, involved in the in the scene, especially in the domestic worker scene. Um, so they're kind of off, off open and and. And actually, they're very active in terms of organizing and mobilizing as well. So yeah, I think, for example, like when I, when I say that I want to make this project, and they're just like totally open with this discussion and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, we have already one question um, from our live chat. And um, since it ties in quite well with what we talked about earlier, I'll just um, ask you already. Um, and the question is, I wonder if in your vision we need the cancellation of the notion of work by the full automation to feel free or the cancellation of the notion of capitalism or if these coincide. That's a very deep question. So what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's really interesting because it's like, you know, for such a long time that the idea of work is always entangled with the idea of capitalism, and and that it's totally different than, for example, like I guess the protagonist somehow talk about that how uh, her mother raised her without even ask for money, you know, like it's it's just pure love, it's just like pure for for her and then i guess it's uh it's true it's maybe it's a it's a cancellation can cancellation of um of uh capitalism capitalism is much more kind of like you know i don't know it's much more uh foreseeable like you know it's much more yeah it's much more doable than maybe the cancellation of, uh, cancellation of work but that we also have to kind of like always rethinking the notion of work itself like what is working what is labor and then yeah what what um yeah what what's the idea behind behind work and stuff like that i guess i don't know if that's answering I mean, questions but yeah that is a very optimist view uh, <laughs> for sure <laughs> <of> capitalism <laughs> Uh, much more doable. Um, I hope you are right, um, if I may so, say so myself. Well, um, because while watching, I was thinking it's a completely different situation, of course, for, for a domestic worker um, than for a creative laborer, maybe like you yeah, or me. Yeah. Um, but capitalism has so, has really found its way so deeply into our brains that life without work mm. is not we can't even imagine it mm. Neither, and, and your narrator can't imagine life without work or that's what i at least interpreted it mm. and um i wonder if we really can overcome capitalism if it went so deeply inside our brains and blood systems but mm. uh, i'm i i <laughs> I hope that you are right. Um, <laughs> but talking about work, maybe go to um, much more to this work we've seen about the drawings that someone labored mm. on and which are 
absolutely beautiful. Jan asked in the YouTube live chat uh, already, who made these beautiful drawings? Did you make them or did you collaborate with others? You know, I collaborate with the uh, childhood, child, childhood friends of mine, which is oh, we kind of really? yeah grew up grew up together since maybe I don't know ten years. Uh, yeah, she's uh, uh, her name is Re uh, Rega Yundia Putri, and she's an illustrator uh, based in Bandung, my hometown. And yeah, we, we I I've, I've been meaning to kind of like collaborating with her. She's actually also was in my band back in the, I don't know, like maybe eight years ago, we had this kind of like noise band and we played together, she played trumpet. And then, yeah, we always uh, talk to to have a collaboration and yeah. And then I was just like, do you, asking her, do you want to, you know, I have this script and then I have this story. What do you think about it? And then she just like, yeah, let me think how to kind of like, um, uh, illustrate that um, uh, the script and then the uh, and then the audio uh, audio pieces. Uh, so yeah, and then I'm and then she also kind of like uh, talking a lot about like uh, how how to uh, put uh, to how um, to kind of like uh, I don't know how to call, uh, how to say in English, but to make the audio pieces more engaging with uh, with her illustration. So I guess I, I completely don't have any direction. So I just give her the, the script and the audio pieces and that's what she came, which is quite nice. And yeah, I, I'm, I don't know, from, from my point of view, it's kind of like beautiful to accompany the pieces. So I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really makes it a, yeah, it, it really ties it all together, um, especially it, since we're fully digital this year. Um, mm. And it's, yeah, it, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, and can you say a few words about the sounds, the sound material, uh, which sources that you use and whose voice it, it, uh, is it? Mm, yeah. So in terms of sound, I used to work a lot with Foley techniques, uh, like a cinema Foley techniques, and I have my own kind of like sound bank as well. But for this project, I especially uh, doing a, a lot of kind of like field recording in the actual park, uh, Victoria Park in Hong Kong every Sunday. And I did a lot of, uh, yeah, I'm really interested in with this idea, I guess, in, in, in the theory of film sound, there's a thing called like a point of audition. So I'm interested in this idea of point of audition. So I I did a lot of recording in basically in my own room and re recording objects and stuff like that and recreating, uh, yeah, trying to kind of like the, recreating the sound, the domestic sound. And in terms of voice is, uh, it was voiced by uh, Fris Frisna Firgiana, and Frisna is actually Frisna is an opera singer, yeah. and yeah, she's she's based in Borneo. She's based in Kalimantan, in uh, northern part of Indonesia, and she's part of the um, an ensemble called Bala Antuman. And then I was just randomly asking friends. Um, uh, uh, Yadi, my friends, I asked him if she, uh, he knows someone who can sing opera, but then interested in uh, doing this kind of like voice acting. At first, I was actually want to do the voice voice acting with the actual domestic workers. I actually wanted to ask that, yeah. Yeah, but uh, they don't want to do it. So it's like, it's really, it's really hard for me. But it's also, I don't want to push them because they only have like Sunday for their free time. And then it's that's the only Sunday that I can ask. And then they they prefer to not really involve in the in terms of the uh, artistic. And then where it's also quite funny when I try to uh, when I actually uh, play the pieces to them and then they're always saying, yeah, you know, it's it's good that you don't have mine to voices it because now it's like it's much better. But anyway, so yeah, it's um yeah, so she's uh She's voicing it in, it's it's kind of like also internet collaboration. So I guess in this time of pandemic, I cannot uh, do, uh, you know, like a live collaboration whatsoever. So yeah, so she sent it all of the voices and then I edit it. So it's a remote collaboration, basically. Exactly, yeah. 
It's, uh, may, it seems to be a theme at this festival. <laughs> but talking about the pandemic, funny you would mention it, um, it also plays a role um, or is mentioned in your piece. Um, mm. And this, it really made me think this, this idea of staying home being a privilege. For some, it's doing good by staying home, whereas the domestic workers are basically more at risk, aren't they, by mm. having to stay home and work even more. And um, yeah, how, how did you um, talk about, with them about that? And how did that find its way into the piece? Yeah, so I was in, I, I am still, I am still in the kind of like chat group with the domestic workers and it's kind of like complaint, com complaint group. So when the pandemic hits, uh, Hong oh, it's quite early in Hong Kong, it hits like in January. And uh, in January already, the, um, the government all telling kind of like, you know, most of the essential worker needs to stay home, work from home. And because domestic workers in Hong Kong, they have to leave, uh, stay with the family. And so they don't, they don't have a, their own kind of like spaces. And Hong Kong is in terms of like spaces is very, you know, small and it's, it's, a, it's really uh, compact. And yeah, in the group, there is always this kind of like discussion about uh, we've been working um, basically like 24 hour per six days and they only have Sundays for uh, free time. And since the pandemic hits, they cannot go out for Sunday. So basically their free time is now become like a uh, working time. And, and then especially, you know, like uh, with the, also most of them are also um, doing this, um, you know, have the family have a child or like a elder, but especially it's also much more work for a child because then the child has to do the online, uh, what is it, the online uh, school. Mm -hmm. And they have to also like, you know, accompany them and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's something that they are discuss a lot about that. And, and until even until now, when everyone's work from home, there's no solution for them, like how to actually, because they cannot say that I don't want to work. Otherwise, you know, you can just like kick out. And um, yeah, so that's the, the discussion. And I find it like, quite interesting to put it in the piece as well, because uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I also have friends who who not the domestic workers, but basically like essential workers, like medical workers who are working in currently work in Indonesia, and and since the pandemic, it's basically like every day, twenty four seven, it's just working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, this, I mean, when when the narrator either dreams or not quite dreams yet, and sees no one in the park. Isn't that also a um, a result of the pandemic when no one can go actually and mm. have a life? Yeah, well, yeah, in in a way, yes. But uh, in the story, in the dreams, it's it's all about that the park. It's now become you know less people because everyone have their own kind of like activity, which is yeah. sleeping, and and yeah. So that's part of it, but. Uh, yeah, park. It's really essential, actually, in 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 their as not park, but public spaces. It's really essential in their uh, uh, in their activities. We got much far, even more questions, and some of them actually um, are questions I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So apparently, we're all thinking the same. Um, and I would like to ask one of them, or both of them, actually, right now, because they tie in also with this idea of the dream that um, that we just talked about as well. Um, I'll just read them. Dreaming on something in a different way than it seems like a real labor. Your reference to culture which enables trend states. How practical is it creating an alternative, more fair world? Uh, so, that's, a, that's a big question. <laughs> it is a big question. And I also wanted to ask about this, this idea of trans states but yeah 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 so uh i guess like trans uh especially maybe in i don't know maybe in uh, the other part of the world but uh, i grew up in indonesia and trans is like kind of like a big thing mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially like um, you have this and, and the domestic workers also do that in Sundays in Hong Kong Park. Uh, they do uh, Jaranan, Jatilan and all of this trans dance. Uh, I guess in this piece, it's like the trans is, is, is kind of like the reflection of being out of the our world kind of thing, you know, like the, the world that they are inhabit now. It's the, it's the reflection how they can get out from there and then start to think about something that they cannot think before, you know, or even possible to, to be, you know, yeah, or even possible to, to think of. So uh, in terms of the questions, like how to, I don't remember, how to make a fair, fair world, right? Yeah. Um, how practical is it creating an alternative and more fair world? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer for that, but it's a it's a really interesting question because it's like whenever you ask someone after you know they had trans, uh, most of them are don't rem don't remember like what's what's uh, what their experience is. It's kind of like skipping time. Yes. Um, so yeah, I guess I I kind of uh, in 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 this piece I kind of want to play with this idea of time as well, like how. Uh, it becomes slow and slow and, um, you know, in in the real, supposed to be real world, it's like skipping, but in this piece, it's kind of like you're actually going to some places that are everything is slower than, than the actual, uh, yeah, actual speed of the... Uh, I, of it really the felt like crawling under my skin, this, this, uh, how slow time got, especially in that, I would say, dreamy middle part um, mm -hmm. of, of the play and absolutely fantastic um mm. and i think this question is really interesting whether trends and dreaming are actually acts of resistance or escapism that hinders resistance and mm. your play kind of kind of hints to both um, yeah yeah i mean i really like the idea of slip as a as a form of resistance you know like because you for example, like uh, maybe in the creative labor, sometimes like you, you don't even have like the proper work time, you know, you always sometimes work because it's like, it's really hard to distinct uh, leisure time and work time in the creative labor, I guess, because Absolutely. you're really so passionate with what you're doing. And, 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 then, and then the pacing of the working time deadline and all of this kind of stuff, it's just make you sometimes forget to sleep and yeah and I really like the idea of just sleeping as a form of resistance uh, to kind of like reclaiming your time as a human being and to kind of like give some times for your brain to I don't know to process any the, everything I really like this I guess it's also something that I get really inspired by the notion of slow cinema. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the movement of, you know, you have a films that actually make you sleep and you go to cinema, it's actually to kind of like um, having your own uh, non-productive uh, time, basically could be productive. Dreaming could be really productive, but in terms of physical bodies. Um, yeah, so I guess it's like something that come across in my mind and I'm trying to re reflect that in this piece as well. Hold that thought about cinemas um, before I take another question um, from the chat and then I would love for you to explain to us what your what the other pro what other projects you're currently working on mm. but first a uh, question from the chat could you talk about spaces of relaxation and dreaming in this work the employer's couch and the plastic chairs and creating sonic distinctions between public and private space, workspace, dream space, etc. Mm -hmm. So the spaces of relaxation and the sonic distinctions between them. Yeah. So again, because I'm maybe my background as a filmmaker, so I I mostly learn uh, uh, about sound through cinema, through audiovisual presentation, and uh, it's really interesting in in the in the kind of like mechanics of film is there's always this kind of like you know terminology like atmos and then the foley sound and sound design and all of this kind of stuff so in the dream world basically there's no atmosphere atmosphere sound so every sound is it's 
again, it's the point of audition. It's always come from like an object or, or some kind of um, yeah things or like anything that um, she did the the, the narrator des describe or like snoring and uh, birds, um, just just the birds, not the wind or the room or like uh, um, spaces, um, like the empty space sound or something like that. So I guess that's like what I'm really interested to kind of like um, creating this distinction between the supposed real world and the dream world is to, to eliminate, uh, uh, to eliminate the, the atmosphere atmosphere atmo in cinema it's called atmos the atmospheric sound mm -hmm. um yeah i guess that's kind of like the big distinction yeah i i'm especially i mean it was quite um by using field recordings it, it felt so immediate and and the different sonic atmospheres really felt so so intimate and real um i thought that was really an amazing feature of the of the piece um, but you just mentioned your background as a filmmaker and you started out, out as a sound-based artist, but um, I'm now doing more cinema and you lived in the UK, you're from Indonesia, but you lived in the UK and now in Hong Kong. What are you currently working on? Um, wh where does all that inspiration now flow to um, currently? Yeah, um, I'm, well, Future project. I'm currently actually making a, a futures films, like a full futures films, um, and it's all about the uh, uh, mystic, like um, uh, Jap Japanese mystic in in the Merapi Mount Merapi, and how they. It's it's kind of like also a bit related. It's all about trans, but it's it's more about like the conversation about the uh, Merapi from the perspective of mystic and volcanologist. So that's kind of like, I guess that's a broader idea. It's to make a film about mountain, uh, especially the volcano, the Mount Merapi, but from the perspective of the mystic, which also related to trance and then volcanologist, which is very scientific. So yeah, I'm hoping but to- That's the position basically between I see yeah. that as a theme in your work, the juxtapositions <laughs> between the things. Yeah, I mean, I'm really interested to kind of like see things collide, you know, <laughs> like um, either scientific or like uh, between scientific and really like, um, you know, like cosmology and and you know, sometimes also like spiritual and uh, superstition, even pseudoscience and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm interested in this kind of like mix of ideas. Mm. And can we expect uh, more um, radio plays as well from you? Is there more coming? <laughs> oh yeah, maybe, maybe I'm. I, I mean, it, this is my actually my first radio piece. I've been thinking a lot to make a radio piece, so I guess yeah, I'm really honored to have this first radio piece in CTM actually. And I'm thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe someday. Uh, I I kind of want to 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 expand the idea of radio piece and playing a lot with narratives and the limitation of also like, you know, broadcasting and radio and sound. And I guess that's something that I also interested in doing uh, maybe in the future. I think audio has a different kind of intimacy compared to mm. um, audio visual uh, media. And maybe as uh, one of the last questions, um, what was for you working on this, the greatest mm. difference between your work as a filmmaker and a, and a researcher and doing an audio only piece? Oh yeah, it's, it's a totally big difference because, well, I mean, even in my, well, in my recent films, I also kind of like pay sometimes too much attention to the sound, but... Uh, I mean, you um, mentioned you have your own sound uh, library. That is yeah. sounds like you're a sound nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, for this uh, for this radio piece, it's totally different because I don't have usually I have this uh, kind of like images in my head before when I make films, for example. But uh, for the radio piece, it's really based on like uh, on the sound itself, and and uh, you know because I make this radio piece really heavily in influenced by my childhood listening to like 
really a, a, a lot of radio play and especially the horror radio play they have a lot of really interesting like sound effects and sound design um also the kung fu one so i'm actually starting uh, uh when i work in this piece i start from that kind of like uh thoughts of you know inspiration for coming from the sound and that's a the, the the big difference i guess from from you know making films because uh when i make films it's all, always comes from the images first uh even the even the this radio piece um there's the idea about the domestic workers and work but um i didn't uh, expand that idea after i find the right sound so yeah it's a, the big difference is just i started a lot with sound in this piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, you work a lot and you just mentioned the next project you're on but you also um, have a piece running in a film festival right can you um, tell us a little bit about that yeah whoever in Netherlands uh, um, my film's uh, Tellurian drama will be played in Rotterdam Film Festival uh, next week congratulations <laughs> thanks yeah so uh, if you are happen to be in the Netherlands, it's online. Well, it's online too bad, but uh, what I can do. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a new. It's not, it's not really recent. It's a, it's last year work, but it's it's yeah, it's uh, it's still have this kind of like a festival life now. So yeah, if you are in the Netherlands, please do check. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. Um, for now, I'll definitely. Um, go back and listen and, and watch um, or in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. I'm traveling to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.